So we're still in the Shinra Tower and we need to find our way out of here. We've already rescued Aerith, but, you know, things have already gone sideways here. In the original game, as I made mention of in previous episodes, your characters were captured and brought before President Shinra, and while they were asleep, something went wrong, and Genova broke out, as well as a bunch of the other test subjects, and basically, most everyone died. All the Shinra employees, that is, that were up on that high level of floor. Uh, strangely enough, if you go down one level, you find that everyone's alive down there, and they, they don't even seem to notice anything happened. Anyway, I don't think you were supposed to go downstairs. But anyway, this game is played out a little bit differently. Well, Cloud sort of passes out, and they wake up inside of this sort of cell that Aerith was kept in as a child. She painted the walls and everything. And, whoa, all the monsters are free now. Kind of distracts from it a little bit, because I'd always liked the original version where suddenly, like, how do you get out of this situation? You're captured by Shinra, and honestly, obviously you're going to find some way of breaking out. But it's sort of like one of those sort of... Uh, opportunities for deus ex machina to sort of rear its ugly head because it doesn't seem like a situation that would be possible or reasonable for your characters to escape from but of course they didn't really have to escape because Genova and Sephiroth more or less broke them out of the prison and when did all this other kind of stuff you know killed all the people and that seems like a bit of a get out of jail free card when it comes to plotting, because you don't want to have an overly contrived solution to a problem that big. But I guess it really works in the original game, because it sort of segues you until the next chapter of the game. Because Sephiroth was referred to in conversation and all that kind of stuff in the earlier parts, but it wasn't really until the escape from the Shinra building that the character becomes like sort of a focus of the story. So it was a shift between, uh, from Shinra being the main antagonist to Sephiroth becoming the main antagonist. And that was the sort of cause of the characters breaking out of prison, so... I feel like it's not an overly contrived solution to them being locked up. Hey, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. If you say so. Guess we're out. What's the plan? First, we find Tifa and Aerith. Then we head for the roof. Should be an elevator somewhere. Didn't expect any of this, but we just gotta roll with it. Come on, let's go. All of this being separated from the other members of the group wasn't something that happened. I mean, I guess they did separate, but it was done intentionally. Nobody fell through a platform or anything like that. And there wasn't really any fighting for the characters to meet back up. Uh, Red 13 went ahead, scouted ahead. Tifa and Aerith went with Cloud, and Barrett stayed behind, saying he was going to clean up for some reason. Just an excuse to have your characters separate a little bit, because the original game, just like this one, you couldn't have more than three party members at one time. So, Cloud, Tifa, Aerith, that makes up a party. You have Barrett and Red 13, which um, needed to be somewhere, so that's how the game set up for them to not be in the party. None of that's really important, though, is it? Hmm. The door seems to have locked. Giving Red 13 a little bit of like a solid snake sounding voice. I don't know what I thought that character's voice sounded like, but that definitely wasn't it. Then again, I wouldn't have suspected like Cloud sounded the way he did either. It's always the way it's going to end up being. <laughs> Alright, now you start to impress me. Wake 
got him. <laughs> yeah, keep it up, y'all. <laughs> Don't move an inch. We'll head down too. Be right there. There's something over there. Or so I just go off all wandering and looking for shit. Clearly you're intended to here though. Clearly you were intended to here. out until we indulge his request for data. Yeah. You said something about a ward, right? I'm pretty sure I saw a door to one upstairs somewhere. So, you want to check it out? You two will be on your own. Be careful. Thanks. We will. We'll be waiting right here. If anything happens, anything at all, you call us, alright? Roger that. Hey, you think Cloud's doing okay? He's been acting really weird lately, more than usual. True, but it's Cloud. I'm sure he'll be fine. But what about you, Tifa? How are you holding up? Huh? Oh, <laughs> I'm fine. Ojo is coming across as quite a bit more sinister in this version of the game. Like, in the original, he was just sort of this weirdo scientist that certainly had a complete lack of ethics, but he wasn't coming along as, like, some kind of a mastermind of anything, at least in this portion of the game. He was experimenting on Aerith, and he for some reason was trying to breed her with Red 13 looking for a test subject that would live long enough for him to do whatever right? experiments he was actually trying to do. Didn't make any sense, but, you know, whatever. Would have thought that weighed a lot more given, look at Aerith running, <laughs> given how Red 13 had to climb on top of the thing. We should let Cloud know. Cloud? Can you hear me? We found the door to that ward he was talking about, but it's locked and we can't get it open. All right. About those preparations Hojo mentioned before. I think we're supposed to do something with that. A central terminal. Interesting. We were fiddling with some sort of control panel. Do you see a way to get across now? All right. We'll make our way to the central terminal. Sit tight until you hear from us. 
the hell kind of research is this? The cataclysm that came from the stars. Genova. Hojo has devoted half of his life to her study. I don't give a shit about any of that. The experiments in this facility involve the enhancement of life forms and machines through the application of Genova biological data. Hojo's plan is to pit his subjects against us, thereby facilitating their growth. Huh. So this asshole thinks he can treat us like his experiments? I know what fate awaits these creations. Let us put them out of their misery. We must first find a passage that leads to the center. Alright, I do take a little bit of an issue with that. Referring to Genova as the cataclysm that comes from the stars is a bit of a reach forward into the storyline. This early in on in the story, you don't really have much of an understanding of what the ancients were. Just that Aerith is one, her mother was one, and she can in some way speak to the planet. Later on in the game, during the flashback to Nibelheim, you get this impression that Genova was discovered in some... Uh, buried underground, some geological strata, and Genova was an ancient as well. And that is where all the experiments were born in an attempt to clone Genova in some way, shape, or form in order to facilitate uh, the uh, Shinra experiments to find the Promised Land. Of course, it wasn't understood at the time by, um, by Shinra, anyway, that Genova wasn't actually an ancient. Genova was an alien that had, in some way, taken the form of the ancient of an ancient. And in fact, was significantly responsible for their extinction. But even though Shinra realizes this by the beginning of the game, which is why they're after Aerith as opposed to trying to clone Genova more, the player and your characters you're playing as don't realize that for a little while longer. Not until, I don't know, probably around Temple of the Ancients or something like that does it become clear that, I'm not sure about that, but somewhere around there it becomes clear that Genova wasn't an ancient, Genova was something else. So having Fred 13 refer to Genova as what she actually is, an alien, Causes a lot of pain and suffering and all that. Wait, it's, it's kind of ruining something. Girls right by the door to the third ward. There are four switches. One for each ward. Specimen. You need to warn the others. Tell them to be careful. Very careful. Tifa, you there? We access the central terminal. The door should be unlocked now. Any one of Hojo's twisted creations can be in that ward. Careful. We will. See you in a bit. This is a little bit... Uh, not like Final Fantasy VII. And, uh, I spoke before about how the characters separated and all that kind of thing. But I don't think in any part in Final Fantasy VII that I can really remember that the characters separate like this. I mean, the characters did separate all the time. But you didn't have them go and switch back and forth between the different parties in order to progress through puzzles. That is something, however, that happens in the final dungeon of Final Fantasy VI. You separate into different parties, and these different parties go and progress through different parts of the dungeon in order to complete different objectives. Not quite as structured as what we're looking at here, but it was something that happened then. This is always something that I didn't like when I did see in games, though, where they forced you to play as sort of the secondary characters. Because usually in a lot of these Japanese RPGs, and you have your party that you play as, you typically have one character. 
that is like the main character that is usually the strongest character. And then you have all of the other characters. Now oftentimes people will pick their favorite characters and they'll just keep playing as those and those characters will level up. Those characters will get the better armor. Those characters will, you will know how to play as those characters the best. And then you have a situation where they get separated and you're being forced to play as characters you haven't leveled, that you haven't uh, figured out how to work that well, you haven't given the best armor and weapons and all that kind of thing. So you're automatically sort of like hobbled by the fact that your characters, your secondary characters, aren't as strong. There's a sadness. A sadness, yes. This game, it's not really that big of an issue because you're not given a choice to play as any of the characters in this. When the game tells you you're going to play as Tifa, you're going to play as Tifa. You're going to have her in your party. You may not have switched over to her. You may not have switched over to her during battle that often, but honestly, the game's not particularly difficult. I'm not sure how many times I died while playing through this game. I played through this quite a few months ago recording all this footage a year ago probably <laughs> or more hell I can't even tell anymore it's taking me forever to get these episodes out maybe I didn't die at all who the hell knows I won't give up. this game's not particularly difficult not that the original Final Fantasy 7 was very difficult either I mean I had some trouble with it when I was a kid but I was just a dumb kid I didn't know what the hell I was doing if I were to play through the original now, I wouldn't die at all, I'm pretty sure. Just like I'm sure if I were to play through this one now. Unless it was maybe on one of like the side quests that are supposed to be more difficult, I might have died. I guess in the original 7, if I tried beating like Emerald and Ruby Weapon, I might die a couple times trying to beat those bosses, because they were pretty difficult if you didn't know what you were doing. Interior levels up mid-battle? That's weird. They're apologizing to these weird dog monsters. <laughs> Don't get cheese. I feel like the characters are oftentimes not taking the situation seriously. It's kind of a common thing in Japanese RPGs that characters come across as goofy. Like they crack jokes or something like that in situations where it wouldn't seem all that appropriate. And this is just during combat. I mean, this isn't during like story sequence or anything like that. So you can give it a little bit of for a little bit of forgiveness, uh, forgiveness, forgiveness there for not taking it seriously. But it does come across as a little bit weird. Oh, is Tifa unconscious? Oh, Aerith's unconscious now. Oh, I'm actually having some trouble here. Shake it off. <laughs> like, you just got your ass kicked. Shake it off. Down she goes, too. Limit. Oh. Okay. Oh, it's the second time I cast that. <laughs> Just kill it. You know, I wonder if this game doles out experience points to unconscious party members, because the original didn't. And the original didn't give experience points to characters that weren't, weren't in the party, either. Maybe this does. These are some big rooms we're going through. Tall ceilings. Doesn't really make any sense. <laughs> How's that? And eh, might as well kill it. Get up there and kill it. Wow, I paused here for a while, didn't I? Maybe I was expecting it to do something. Look, she's all like... 
Uh, what is it? Sneaking. No, oh, no, didn't work. <laughs> oh, freaking scanned it twice. I guess every character has, like, certain advantages and disadvantages. It, the original game wasn't well known for that, after all. Because the job system was largely absent in Final Fantasy VII. Previous games in the series, you had different classes. You had your warrior, you had your monk, you had your white mage, your black mage, your red mage, and all these different things. Final Fantasy VI sort of screwed with that a little bit. By giving everybody the ability to cast magic under certain circumstances. But 7 really screwed it up by having all characters be able to cast magic based on what materia had equipped on them. So you did have um, certain characters that were better at certain things. Like Tifa was a fairly high attack power character. But she didn't have... She was fairly low in terms of HP and fairly weak in terms of magic abilities. But even though she was a weak magic caster, she still had the ability to cast magic. So there really wasn't any particularly good reason for you to not put, like, a cure materia or a lightning materia or whatever. Or whatever materia you needed from her on her so she could cast magic. And even though she wasn't as good at casting magic as Aerith or even Cloud, it... You would never not cast magic on a weak magic character Let's get across with those. if you needed to because she was blessed she wasn't as good at it, you know? It did kind of create this little bit of a strategic thing you had to think about, though, because Materia had a habit of affecting the stats of your characters. Like, say, putting magic Materia on a character, and especially summon Materia on a character, would tend to lower their physical strength, as well as their HP. So sticking magic materia on a character like Tifa would actually... Oh, let's see. Did we wake him up? Yeah, looks like it. So sticking magic materia on a character like Tifa would actually sort of uh, lower her attack power, which was her greatest um, her greatest ability, and de and decrease her HP, which was her greatest weakness, even further, all for the sake of giving her magic attacks, which she wasn't particularly good at. Now, as bad of an idea as that sounds, the characters were so close in terms of the disparity in stats that it actually still made sense to load Tifa up with at least a fair amount of materia. She wasn't as good at Aerith as using any magic, but she was good enough that it made sense to always have it there. And even though it decreased her strength, it didn't decrease it enough to mitigate the fact or to diminish significantly her strength advantage. And even though she was weak in terms of HP, it didn't lower her HP enough to um, justify not giving her magic. Also, mentioned, not to mention the fact that the... Or, or definitely to mention the fact that there were materials that you could equip that would mitigate those negative effects like the HP plus materia. So, Tifa, you would lower her HP by loading her up with magic materia. You could increase it again by throwing in HP plus materia. I don't think there's anything to boost her strength or anything, but that doesn't matter. This game, anyway, seems to be playing with that by having the characters perform very differently in fights. So, you have Cloud with sort of like a mid-range attack. He's a melee character. He has a sword. But it's a big sword. It's long. It can attack at a good distance. Barrett, of course, has a gun. He can attack at maximum different distance. Just like uh, Aerith can attack at maximum difference. Only a little bit slower, but maybe with... I don't know if her attacks are more powerful or not, even if they're slower. But uh, she's definitely better with magic. Tifa, on the other hand, seems to be good with attack, but 
I'm having trouble in these sections, it looks like, because she doesn't have the ability to attack at any range. A lot of enemies move out of her range while attacking. So, if I had more experience playing as the character, I'd be doing better in this section of the game. Yeah, well, video's over. Huh. Didn't even notice I wasn't looking at the screen.